common mistakes? Are there things that you've seen or witnessed um, in in working whether it be with athletes at soccer level, football, um, or with general pop um, that you've seen as you've you know uh, experienced over the last few years? Uh, and if so, what are they, and how can practitioners try and avoid making them? Um, yeah, from 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 my experience, I think. Um, especially maybe younger athletes um, in terms of recovery. Um, they often become enamored with all the new uh, modalities that, that are around today in terms of like massage and ice baths and all these sort of, um, you know, gadgets that you can use. And I think um, oftentimes the, the, what I like to call three R's, which is rehydrate, replenish, and rest, get get neglected in favor of these um, maybe more advertised or, or exciting new new methods. And for those that are currently doing their bachelors and they're thinking about doing their masters, what what are some topics or or um, some things that you you felt that really helped you from a practitioner point of view once you um, yeah undertook your master's degree? Um, load monitoring is um, definitely a massive one for me, in, like in terms of um, being able to ensure that athletes are recovering enough um, and also training enough to give them the stimulus that they need to improve. Um, it's a very fine balance and it's very tricky to, to get that balance, especially as you get towards that elite, elite level um, where turnaround times between competition can be very, can be very or relatively small. Um, and there's a lot of research going into that space. Um, and a lot of people are very interested in that. Um, so definitely that was, what would be the biggest one for me. Um, and the other one would be enhancing, enhancing muscular performance from that sort of more detailed point of view. Is there any like three books or, or documentaries or could be podcast episodes that you think it's worthwhile either athletes or coaches to read or listen? Um, yeah, I think, um, my books that I would, would say would be Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by um, Stephen Covey. Um, there's also Highly Habits for Teens, which is written by his son, which is really good, I think, for, for teens and youths. Um, another one is Bruce Lee, A Life by the author Matthew Polly, which I really found um, extremely inspiring and extremely uh, useful for myself. And also the last one would be the Road Less Travelled by Scott M. Peck. What are some of your favourite drills uh, for maybe developing footballers that don't have access to a training conditioning coach at their club? What, what could, can be some things they can do to ensure that their warm-ups are not only uh, preventing injuries and preparing them for the session, but also improving their athleticism? Yeah, uh, I like to use um, a, phenomenon I came, a phenomenon I came across, which is RAMP. Uh, so I use that to sort of base my warm-ups upon. So RAMP it stands for raise. So raise is um, getting the heart rate up, the body temperature, respiration, so breathing rate and, and, and intensity up um, as a start to get that body nice and supple, nice and warm for the, for the um, session ahead. Then A is activation. So getting down to um, more specific joint movements to engage certain muscles. So for example, I mentioned glute bridges before um, to get those glutes firing. So the bum muscles around the hip, which are obviously really important. And you mentioned in the new year, uh, you'll start getting in a group uh, strength session. What would a typical strength session look like? Um, and what will be some of your key focuses for the group? Um, for me, I'm um, coming into it with a, um, uh, maybe less uh, complete view of, of where each individual athlete is at in terms of their technique uh, and their experience in the, in the weight room. I would start off with a really simple full body, full body workout, get the athletes to pair up with each other, um, preferably more experienced guys with less experienced guys. So that way can, they can feed off each other, they can assist each other and I can walk around and just supervise and make sure that everyone's sort of doing what they need to do and, and that no one's feeling any sort of undue discomfort um, and that they get, they're getting the right muscles engaged in, in the, in the actual exercise that they're doing. Um, and then from there building it into 
uh, progressively more complex and, and intense sessions.